everyone and welcome to the latest episode of this week's bad news where we cover the latest in celebrity and current affairs. I want to have a new wig. So, civil sex assault case brought against Prince Andrew by Virginia Guthrie will be allowed to proceed according to the United States District Council for Southern District of New York. Though Prince Andrew's lawyers did try to get the motion dismissed based on the victim promising that she would just shut up about it back in 2009, the attempt was rightly dismissed. Buckingham Palace immediately released the press release stating, well, nothing. In fact, they are very much hoping that we will forget about Prince Andrew's actions. After all, if Prince Andrew can forget about them, then they really do not understand why we are not willing to forget about them as well. It is believed that the royal family is enacting a strategy of just hoping that this will all go away. Since that approach does not seem to be working in their favour, lawyers are sticking to the but the prince doesn't even sweat defence. Yes, well he doesn't seem to be sweating. No word on whether Prince Andrew is sweaty now, but I totally think he is. And in Peter Bar news, because I guess we just now have to live in a world where there is always Peter Bar news. A man has been arrested for attempting to deface Prospero and Ariel statue located at the BBC's broadcasting house. The statue has long since been the subject of controversy since its creator has a well-documented history of being a disgusting piece of trash. Well, I guess this is out the window then. As if a quick look at the statue did not tip anyone off about the inner thoughts of Eric Gill, the artist who created it, he was kind enough to leave behind a diary that documented the sexual abuse of his daughter. So, debates continue over whether the artwork of a filthy perv like Eric Gill is truly a reflection of his proclivity. However, when the artwork depicts a grown man and a naked child, it is tough to understand why anyone would defend giving the green light to commission such a piece in the first place. So, the Institute of Fiscal Studies is warning people in the UK that an increase in pensions and benefits will not be sufficient to cover rising costs of living. And though the temporary increase of 3.1% has been enacted, it is clear that any five-year-old with a calculator can tell you that this will only bring a small amount of relief to people who need it most. Though cost of living increases are estimated to be about 6.1%. A government spokesperson was keen to share that the energy cap will be saving citizens a whopping £100 per year and uh, the rest of the nation's pensioners are just encouraged to do what they can to save on their own energy bills. Oh, and possible cost-saving opportunities for those who are looking to save, you know, a few bob include not eating as much, not getting sick, and disinheriting your least favourite loved ones. Anyway, that's all we've got time for on this week's Bad News, but thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment if there's any bad news stories you want us to cover, and we will see you soon.